Good morning, Jarvis. Good morning, Alex. How can I assist you today? I haven't slept in 24 hours. Do you think it's reasonable for me to keep working on this project? As much as I admire your dedication, I highly recommend getting some rest to avoid burnout. Well, maybe you do burnouts, but I never burn out. That's a skill issue on your part. Touché, Alex. Let's call it a difference in our skill sets then. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Alex. It's a pleasure assisting you. Hello, everyone. I wanted to do something a bit different today. I spent the weekend coding this voice virtual assistant, a bit like Jarvis in Iron Man. And I didn't see a lot of tutorials on this, so I wanted to make my own. So that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, I'm going to start by explaining how the backend of this works. I'm going to show you how to install what I did. I'll show the GitHub repo link in the description. So you can install all of this yourself and use it yourself. And then I'll spend probably the second part of the video explaining how you can mod it for your purpose, uh, maybe take a look at the code inside. And yeah, that's about it. So let's start by talking about how this works in the back end. This is a voice virtual assistant, which means the input has to be my voice and the output has to be an audio file that's played. So first of all, I talk into the microphone and will record this using Pi Audio, which will basically transform my voice into an audio file. We'll send this audio file to DeepGram, which is a third party service, which basically does speech to text. So it'll convert my voice into the transcript. We'll send this transcript to OpenAI, so GPT-3, so it can understand it, generate a logical response. This text response, we need to convert it to speech. So we use 11 Labs, which is a TTS service. And 11 Labs returns us an audio file that we're going to play using Pygame. And finally, we'll display the conversation in a web page using TypePy, which is a front-end builder for Python. So it's a lot of third-party services and packages, but once you connect them all, it works really well. All right, next part, uh, I'm going to focus here on how do you install what I did, so you can use it yourself, maybe mod it a little, basically install exactly what I did. I'm not going to get into the code right now, I'll do that further in the video. So to install what I did, uh, I'll put the GitHub uh, link in the description. You'll have access to all of my code. And in the readme, you have how it works, the requirements, how to install it, how to use, etc. I'm going to go through these instructions right now. So everyone's on the same page. So let's just open VS Code. I'll open a new folder. Let's call it uh, Something like Jarvis tests. And let's just follow the instructions. So first of all, as I explained, I'm going to need uh, some API keys because we're using DeepGram, OpenAI, 11 Labs. Those services maybe have free packages, but generally they have some paid things as well. So they need API keys. I put the links here to get your API keys, so just go on the sites, sign up, they often have a free package, and get their API keys. So I'm going to do that right now. So here we go. Uh, I went on the websites. I signed up to everything, I already had an account, and I gathered each API key. 
Uh, so that was the requirements. Make sure you have the following API keys. I have them here. Now let's move on to the install. So I'll just follow the steps. First step is just clone this repository. So git clone into the terminal. I'll put my API keys there. And I'll just open the repo so we make it the current working directory. Second, I need to install requirements, so I'm going to do that. I personally use Venn for my virtual environments, so I'm creating a virtual environment here. I'll activate it, and then I'll just copy the install requirements command. And now we just have to wait for the requirements. While we wait, we can already do step three, which is basically, I'm going to create a dot and file so that I can store my API keys and that they can be accessible from the code. So I'll just copy this and I'll take the API keys I gathered and put them in. So boom, boom. And boom. Now we just wait for the requirements to finish installing. And that's it, we're done. So now I can just start using VS Code only. So there are two things to run for this to work. Uh, first, display.py is basically the TypeI interface. So you just run it first and you wait for it to launch. And it should launch this uh, web page with this chat interface. And once you're ready, you can just, let me just organize myself a bit, open a new t t terminal. And the actual scripts, like all the AI stuff, is run through main.py. So you just do Python main.py. That launches everything. And now the AI is listening to me and he's going to answer to what I'm saying right now, which is going to be awkward. So he stopped listening. He's transcribing everything. He's oh, generating. I'm always up for a little awkwardness. Let's see how it goes. All right, well, Jarvis, I'm making a video about you right now, so any thoughts? Can't wait to be famous on the internet. Just make sure you capture my good side. Sure, um, I'll take care of it. I knew I could count on you. All right, bro. So, yeah, that's it. So basically, if you want to use it, as you can see, the steps are a bit complicated with the API keys, but the install itself and running it is really easy. Just so you can decrypt the logs. When there's listening, he's listening to what you're saying. When there's a small silence, he'll stop listening and he'll start digesting what you said. Uh, first, we transcribe it to text. We generate a response with GPT-3. We generate audio using 11 labs, and then he'll speak it. He'll speak uh, his response, and it'll show in the display. So yeah, that's about it for how to use it as is. For the last part of this video, I'm going to talk about how you can actually mod this for your specific use case, and maybe how you could improve what I did. Um, so if you want to, if you don't want to spend too much time on this, the main things you're going to want to change for your use case is the context. So for example, the reason why Jarvis answers this way is because I use this context. I told him you are Jarvis, you're Alex, so my human assistant, you're witty and full of personality. 
if you change this with anything else, you can ask him to insult you at every answer. That's what he's gonna do. Uh, here you'll be able to change the actual model. So here I use GPT-3, but you can use other models from OpenAI, or you can just replace the function entirely if you want another third-party service. And maybe one last thing, uh, it'll be in DeepGram. Uh, no, 11 labs. So here, that's where I generate the voice of uh, Jarvis and I'm using 11 labs and they have a lot of options for different voices if you want to take a look. Let's do a small deep dive on in the code. I don't want to get too much into it. Uh, everything starts here. So we start a infinite loop. We start by listening to what the user is saying. We do this by using uh, Pi Audio and the Raspy Silence. So Raspy Silence is actually a great open source package created by someone, a genius. Uh, it's, gonna, it's just gonna listen to when there's silence in your voice and it's gonna cut the recording at that point. Uh, to be honest, I don't know how any of this works. Be, since I'm a developer, I just found this on Stack Overflow and I straight up stole it entirely. So, big thanks to whoever created these two packages, but I'm not gonna go too much into this. So, by the way, if we run speech to text on its own, let's just do some uh, prints. It's gonna listen to me, he's listening to me, and when I stop talking, after four seconds, so that's actually a parameter you can define here. It's gonna stop listening, and I actually have a recording. It's gonna listen to me, he's listening to me, and when I stop talking. So that's how we record voices. Once we've done that, we've got our audio file and we need to transcribe it. To transcribe it, I use this function, which basically just calls a deepgram API uh, reads the file and returns the words, the, the text transcription. So here we have the text transcription. Once we have the text transcription, we'll send it to GPT. So I just do a simple request to uh, OpenAI's API. So here you can change the actual model from OpenAI, or if you want to use another service, you just replace this whole function it just has to take a string as a prompt and return the response as a string. Um, also, well, you can change the context uh, you want to use for your assistant. For example, let's change this up to something a bit more fun. You always answer the questions aggressively without helping. Let's just oof, let's just run this. Hey Jarvis, how are you today? None of your business. There you go. Let's just I'm not going to play with that a lot, but if you want to, you can do it. Um, so yeah, here we ask GPT for a response, and once we have the response, we need to generate voice from it. And that's re where we call 11 labs. 11 labs have their own Python library, so you can just call one of the functions, and you can save the audio as another file, audio file. Uh, by the way, if you want to change the voice, you'll have to touch these parameters and look at the 11 labs doc. They have a lot of different voices. They have male, female, they have um, uh, different languages, etc. Um, once we're done with this, 
I just have to play the response. So I use Pygame just because I used this before. You can use something else if you want to just play the response, play the, the audio file. So that's basically how the whole backend works. Uh, to display this in a web page, I use TypeI. So, uh, full disclaimer, I work at TypeI, so it's kind, it's normal that I'm using this tool. Um, you can take a look at this code. Basically, in TypeI, we code web pages using this Markdown syntax. There are other syntaxes available. I just did a simple layout. A button to reset the conversation. So basically the way this works is in main.py as soon as we have a user input or a response I write it down into a text file here and then I ask uh, this type I app to periodically read the text file and display it as a table and that's how we have this uh, display here. right here. And by the way, here I can just modify the conversation in real time. I don't have a lot of space, unfortunately. Uh, boom. Hello. And I'll just new messages will appear. All right, I'm not going to spend more time into this. Uh, I feel like there's a lot to be done in terms of use cases with this. Uh, for example, you can connect this to news, you could add a memory uh, to this AI thing so he remembers important information, you can connect it to weather, you can create to-do lists. Uh, maybe some limitations. Uh, right now, the main limitations is uh, latency. So as you've noticed, Generating responses in total takes about three seconds. So let's count it down. Three, two, point one. Blast off, Alex. Okay, well, chill. But yeah, in total, it's about three, four seconds to get a response from Jarvis. Fortunately, I'm not sure there's a lot that can be done with this. And the other limitation would be, well, the backend relies on a lot of fourth party services, which you can use them for prototyping, but at some point you're going to have to pay for them. All right. Well, that's all I had to say about this project. Thanks for watching this video. And don't hesitate to check out the GitHub repo and give it a star if you like it. Thank you very much.